I'm a little late to the party, but regardless, let's get this show on the road. THQ Nordic finally dropped a showcase for the upcoming Gothic remake last week, and my first impression was that this really embodies the nature of the original unrated RPG from 2001, made in Poland. <clears throat> I mean Germany. I'm just here to give you guys a breakdown of anything you might have missed from the showcase that was dropped on the 2nd of August. We'll go through each shot and give it a rating whether it's good or can it be improved. The video starts with the words from one of the fire mages and the nameless being dropped into the lake at the very start of the game. The lake itself seems to be quite a bit deeper and bigger than what we experienced in the original, or could it just be they chose a specific shot? The way the nameless is dropped in had me worried about the physics as he's dropped down face down, and I expect him to go back first, but I suppose it'll depend on how they actually push him. I'm just nitpicking here. I give this neutral points. Next shot is one of the nameless looking over the center of the Valley of Mines, specifically the old camp and the mountain backdrop. It's very brief, but we can see a lot of elevation happening which corresponds to the climbing mechanic that the developers have been talking about. I also like the way the barrier looks, like it was made by magic of the water mages. Definitely a plus point there. Afterwards we have some combat, where the Nameless is fighting a small wolf near some old ruins. I could be guessing the location is either near Cavalorn's hut, where we have already seen a ruined tower, and what seems to be a small camp in the distance, perhaps even a bandit camp. The hero is holding a basic sword, but the shot was too fast to catch on anything else other than him wearing the first tier shadow armor. I'm not giving any points for this one. The shot after that is him fighting a snapper who intriguingly whips his tail as a form of an attack. The developers must have taken Jurassic Park into consideration, as certain dinosaurs would have the same thing while not using their teeth. The Nameless also steps backwards to avoid the attack without getting hurt, which implies the combat will be improved as we could only parry an attack from animals rather than dodging them. You could step sideways, but that would only work when they're charging at you directly. That mechanic was added in certain mods of the OGs, however, another green for Team Alchemia. The following shot shows us a glimpse of using an ice attack playing as a water mage. The effect of this does remind me of a certain ARPG games like Path of Exile, where the ice still stays on the ground for a few seconds after it's being cast. And even though it's an ice attack, we can see drops of water also getting splattered in the air. The goblins themselves don't look to have different sizes as speculated in one of my previous videos, but this shot was too quick to analyze that. As for the location, it seemed to be on a plateau of some kind, with the cliff on the left side and the sea on the right in the distance. It could also be the rendering wasn't finished here yet, I could see some improvement here so I'm giving this one point in minus. We also have the Nameless running into a mine, which has some very nice contrast between darks and lightning effects. There's also rails we can see which indicate the transportation in Gothic also includes train trolleys of some sort, which we haven't seen before. It would be weird if train tracks would also mean there are actual trains in the Gothic universe now, but I digress. The shot also has some water in the backdrop, which probably means that the abandoned mine will also be part of the map. I mean, we were promised they would include forgotten locations from the OG as well. We'll just have to see how many we actually get. Definitely a pro point. Moving on, the nameless hero is wielding a two-handed axe with some Templar armor, fighting a scavenger in a forest with a shack in the background. I can't think of any place like that in Gothic 1, but maybe it's just an abandoned shack nobody used as the roof is torn off and the surroundings seem abandoned. I really like the shading of this shot as it represents something you'd see in real life if the forest was very thick. I'll stop saying which points shot get and just post it on screen. We then get an underwater shot of a lake with some buildings being flooded and a door that seems to have led to a fort. It could just very well be the new camp's lake with something new added since the NPC who built the dam explained he had to do it to grow the rice fields although there was no under fort in the OG. One of the shots that confused me was this next one where the Nameless could be doing one of the two things. He's either casting a necromantic spell, that was my first guess, but then I looked at it again and it seems he got caught in a tar trap or something similar. My guess would be the latter as he's also moving in a strange way. 
As for his clothes, if these are the same basic rags he came into the valley with, I'd say they're pretty spot on. I'd expect the top to be a bit more brown and more torn, but maybe I'm expecting too much or it's just basic cloth armor you can find early in the game. The next one is a very clear shot as a fire mage fighting a group of orcs in an enclosed valley. They seem to have gotten the fire mage rope on point with this one. I see no flaws with it. As for the fire attacks, not much to say, but again, we'll get back to that later. There's a few more quick shots left, so we'll go through them fast. This next one is an obvious location in the sect camp where the hero is fighting one of the Templars with a two-handed sword and a novice in the background. The fact that sparks are flying when blocking is a very nice added effect, same as in the original games. The area itself seems to not produce much sunlight in the marsh areas with a lot of big trees. Seems like we might need torches in more places than just in mines and caves. It gives that nice gothic vibe. Next quick shot is the Nameless fighting the group of goblins, which seems to be in the very same spot as with the water mage skill before. Only difference is he's using a bow and wearing what I'd guess is a mercenary armor. I still don't know where this location is though. A very brief shot of charging a spell as a fire mage, the only thing I can add here is the design of his face. Compared to the teaser trailer, I think this is quite an improvement, although the lighting is oversaturated and we can't see the details. But it's definitely a step up from what we were shown 3 years ago. Next quick shot is the hero using a sword to unalive either one of the guards or one of the bandits, I really can't tell. But we can see him wearing the heavy guard armor and wielding a two-handed sword in a place with a ladder. Could be at the very entrance of the game as we know there was a gate and two guards on it. Another quick shot of charging a fire mage spell in a more open space. And then we come to the logo of Alchemia Interactive, the developer. We now start with longer various shots of the game and a remake of the speech that we've heard from Zardas' voice actor in the original English dub. I'll quickly start with the speech. For those that don't know, Alchemia has tried to put back the team of the original voice actors, although it's quite a long shot with a lot of them being retired or in the case of the Nameless Heroes voice actor being deceased in 2007. I even made a short video about him, you can check it in the link in the description. For the voice we hear here clearly isn't the original Xardas who gives the speech in the original intro for Gothic 1. He does sound eerie and mysterious, that I have to say, but as far as the cast goes, judging also from the teaser dropped a few months ago, we clearly see that most actors are of British origin. Hopefully they'll incorporate different accents since this is after all a penal colony and the main language is going to be English. Now for the wide shot of the Valley of Mines. I absolutely love this shot as you can clearly see the outer ring, the majestic tower in the old camp, and something that surprised me was the amount of trees and growth around the old camp itself. I myself like a more greenish world, I'm just not sure how green Gothic was supposed to be with the graphics we had in 2001 in the first place. In the second shot right after, we see a couple of orcs sitting in a circle. From the first perspective, their skin seems sort of a green-grayish color. I was expecting them to be more of a hairy race that resembles a mixture between humanoids and gorillas. In this shot alone, they seem to have more of a World of Warcraft approach. There could be several variants of these orcs, but only time will tell. No complaints about the surroundings though. A shot of an orc in full body armor gives me that Guild Wars 2 char vibes for those who have played that MMO. Char had similar armor with a similar stance when fighting. We do have some blood marks on its helmet, which I'm guessing represents the casualties he has unalived. The background shows people hanging from what seems to be like a wooden bridge and their clothing seems to indicate they're from different camps. Then we get a few shots of what I'm guessing is the old mine. The contrast between lights and darkness are very well done. The fact that the magic ore is glowing had me wondering why that wasn't done in the OG. I like it. It makes it more magical. They have said in the podcast number 4 that mines will be expanded a bit and will have various objects in different sizes for their layout, so every part of the mine will look a bit different and unique. In the following shot, the mages are called upon to make a barrier. We do not specifically see whether they are indeed water mages or fire mages, as we do all know the story of the 12 mages that have been sent to make the barrier itself 
and then split into two factions while playing the game. I was expecting all of the locations where the mages would perform the ritual to be a solid flat ritual altar, but I'm not a magical expert, so I'm not entirely sure why those rock formations are there for in the first place. Could be something to do with the protecting the surroundings, with the overwhelming power of the focus stones. They don't really show the expansion of the barrier as it was created in the shot afterwards, and I do understand why. It's probably because they want to lead the animation of it for the actual game. Next shot is about a convict striking down a guard in the middle of the night, reflecting the original revolt in the old camp. The skin texture at night seems to still need some work, but I like the fiery glow effects as well as a raven in the background flying away, which is also something new. Maybe they'll add more ambient creatures in the game, not just meat bugs. We get a beautiful shot of the inner castle walls, which just speaks out gothic. The place looks a bit enlarged, but I think they're compensating for the whole world also just being bigger. You can even see mud piles in places from the rain and the night before. And the mountain range behind is pretty tall. It now actually gives you a feeling that this is an enclosed valley that was already hard to escape before the barrier. Afterwards, we get another shot of the entire old camp with the front gate and its majestic castle and the old fortress behind on the mountain top. If this ever would expand into Gothic 2, I really would be curious what they would do with the dragons themselves. Anyway, as mentioned earlier, there's a lot of trees and undergrowth in the surrounding area, and I like that, it makes things harder to find. I just hope nothing has an indicator that shows you where you need to go, apart from maybe a compass on top, and even that is not necessary. Keep it clean. The shot of Taurus guarding the front gate has been expected. We've already seen the Ore Baron Guard's armor in one of the screenshots delivered last year, so this just makes it more wholesome. We get another quick shot of the old mine and right after is what I believe could be the entry point to the colony where the hero gets thrown in. It looks very detailed and it's guarded as well. As you remember, there was nobody there in the original game, not at least after Bullet punches you in the face. There's also some other minor details here with boxes, which aren't just regular boxes or barrels. We also have other goods wrapped in some white cloth and a crane in the middle of it all for easier operating. It definitely looks like an exchange place now. The new camp looks absolutely spectacular if you ask me. Again, it is nighttime. I do wish they would also show it in the day. I am surprised to see an extra level going down to the ore mount, but no obvious way to go around to get to it directly. It looks bigger. I'm not entirely sure if we can see also the access to the water mages on the cliff above, but I guess we'll see with more trailers in the future. We do see a few mercenaries standing around in random spots, as well as Kronos walking around the ore mount circle. In the second quick shot, we see the ore mount itself, and what seems to be pouring on top of it is either the pulverized sand from when they're tossing the ore inside this hole, or could it be water, but that wouldn't make sense. Where would water come from beside the nearby lake, which is definitely too far. The sect camp gives us a cold and marshy feeling with its green environment, but the devs definitely missed something here. There's too many candles, which I don't mind, but where are the magic ore torches that would lit up the sect camp bluish in the nighttime? I think they'll hear our voices and add it in later. In the worshipping area, which would serve as a sort of an altar for the demon lord, we see a sleeper mask right in the center of it all, which would explain Iberian's visions about the sleeper himself. Again, we're missing some magic ore torches. We return for another shot in the old camp, and it's basically how I remember it, just better looking. Of course, we couldn't achieve this level of detail with any mod made by the community, not unless we take Skyrim's graphics and enhance them, so this is very satisfying for me to see. The rainy nights we can see have a very strong effect of not being able to see into the distance, just a few shapes here and there. I just hope they're not going to be too often, sometimes that can ruin the game experience a bit, you know. Oh look, it's raining, again. <laughs> we finally get a close up of the new Diego and his shadow armor. They've really done a much better job than what we've seen in the playable teaser, and this just goes to show what the community's feedback can do if you just listen. 
He does seem to have a bit of extra beard on his jawlines, and that's fine with me. It's not like shaving razors are in abundance in the Valley of Mines. They also give him wrinkles, as expected. He is between 40 and 50 years old, after all. An experienced man, as they've described him. The physic of speaking seemed to be doing well. I just wonder how well it'll go when he'll be talking. I'm also interested in seeing how the weapons will clip the armor, if at all. That's probably one of the hardest things to do in a game these days, especially games that have characters with cheated weapons. But we'll see that in this trailer as well. The shot taken from the blacksmith in the old camp's castle shows us what kind of lightning scattering we're getting. While under a roof and behind the sun it's still very dark, the outside in the courtyard is very bright. Another plus. Exploration in the night is what it should be, very dark. On the occasions of the full moon there should be some light scattering, but I'm not sure if the deaths will actually go that far. As for this shot right here, it's probably a new quest that has been added with plenty of others to fulfill the missing pieces. Although this one straight out reminds me of the Skyrim intro, except there's no horses. But yeah, we'll see how quests are actually implemented. I mean, we can only speculate so far. This is the iconic bridge at the start and the abandoned mine in the background, but it feels like it leads to something more than just rocks this time. I believe we're getting a much more expanded cave system. What we also see here is the Nameless killing a mole rat by pointing the weapon downwards instead of using the same stance for every creature, which is very astonishing to me. The gate that leads to the Valley of Mines itself is exactly how I pictured it, and it has everything you'd expect. A few goods on the side waiting to be transported further into the barrier, the ropes and pulleys holding the door, and of course the flag as a border between lands. Diego walking through it also adds a bit of nostalgia. The only thing I didn't like here is the blurred ground texture. That could just be poor rendering though. The shot of the other ring, which is probably on the east side of the castle, seems to also be enlarged, so the world feels a bit bigger, and I'm down for that. Two guards seem to be patrolling. I hope we see a lot of that in the day, and less of it in the night, as an opportunity for sneaking and stealing. I always like being a thief in this game. The obvious shot of the fire magician tells us, this is Caristo. No doubt about it. And I really like what they've done with the high fire mage rope. Lots of little details in the design. We can't really see the colors that well, but you can actually feel them. The book he's reading definitely has normal alphabet letters. Even though if distinguished well, we still wouldn't be able to read it. I can tell you that it's something between Spanish and Latin. I couldn't decipher anything specific though. Now let's talk about that window behind him. What I can see is two people in red robes, which I'd assume are fire mages, and a fire in between them that represents this cult. But the way this glass window is portrayed feels too Christian. We can see these things in churches, sure, but Gothic was never focused on it. We have a religion that is based around magic and the three gods, Enos, Adanos, and Beliar, which are the representation of good, balance, and evil. So I'll say it out loud, I don't like it. The magic ore getting extracted actually looks like minerals in mines you would find in the real world. I did expect them to change that from the original as there will only see chunks of ore sticking out here and there. This is a way better representation. Then we have another shot of the blacksmith in the eastern part of the outer ring in the old camp, which definitely looks like a real life setting. The forge being lit, having air vents on top to dispose of the fumes, the swords that he has finished or need to be sharpened being neatly arranged, the sharpening stone is spot on as is the anvil, and what I'm guessing is in those bags is probably either food or sand to sharpen tools easier. Anyway an overall good shot. Next is one of the diggers smoking a roll of swamp wheat. I really like the effect of the smoke here as it dissipates into the air, and the joint is not too big and nor is it clipping his hands or fingers. What I didn't like was the way his eyes moved, that looked very unreal and very stiff. That definitely needs work on, so I'm giving this both points. Two workers working on a platform with the gallows, the physics here seem to be on point, as well as the texture of the wood, at least from afar. 
I don't know how much this game is actually going to push our graphics cards, but I hope they have a stable version for playing it in ultra mode. As for the gallows themselves, I hope they actually get used, not just being there for show. Then we switch over to a water mage, also reading a book. The lighting here is not perfect, as the skin reflects it a bit poorly, but the rope seems to be on par with those of the OG. I really can't tell who this water mage would represent. It could either be Mixer or Mardarian, as they were the two mages buried in the books in the library and didn't have a mustache or beard of any kind. No further thoughts here. One of the following shots has a relatively young man cooking and preparing a meal for the inhabitants of the old camp. Snaps in the next shot, probably cooking some meat bug ragu, but maybe they have an extra chef on the other side of the castle doing the same thing. The houses behind them look quite sturdy, some of them even look like they're being overgrown, as it seems a lot of time has passed in the colony. The clothing of the convicts also seem a bit different on each one, which is another nice addition. I'm excited to see more. I do wonder what that is though. The picture on the door. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. As said before, here we can see Snaff in the shot. We have a wine barrel in the front loaded with different goods and what seems to be a wolf skin on one of the houses in the background. I'm not going into too much detail with this one as I have no complaints. The inner castle has a few guards having a roast. We've already seen a similar shot before this without them being there. The structures seem to have very nice textures on them. The brick roof looks like it's seen better days. Can't really distinguish if there's anybody important here though, but an overall good shot. Then we finally get a design of an animal from up close. I do believe that this is a lizard that resembles the Komodo dragon with its elongated neck and long tongue. Very different from the ones we encounter in the original Gothic series. I do expect to have some lost animals that were only embedded in the cold of the original, such as an alligator. You could spawn it using Marvin cheat codes, but anyway, this creature does look majestic. We've already seen a screenshot of a mole rat in full detail. The quality of this shot doesn't do it justice really. But anyway, no complaints here. I do believe this is the same one the Nameless killed earlier in this trailer in the same place across the bridge near the beginning. Scavengers look a bit different too, with protective bones on top of their bodies. It kind of makes sense, they'd pick up things that would protect them from other tougher creatures. This next shot I believe is a close-up of the rogues living in the new camp. Although the setting is a bit strange, and it's strange to see another black man in there besides Gorn and Taurus from the old camp, this shot is too dark to decipher it further. I will only say their armors look decent. These goblins are probably from the same two shots we've seen earlier with the cliffs in the background, and we can clearly see the two distinguished ranks where both of them have armor and one is even wearing a helmet. They set up tents and that means their intelligence has evolved beyond what we've known of the OG. I've always had an impression they were these sort of intellectual animals, but not this far. I don't know what to make of it, but I have an open mind. We have another quick shot of the valley, which we're skipping. And then it's to the gameplay where the player is running towards the gates where the orcs might live. It's pretty obvious with the totem set on the side. The question is, will we be getting the orc city that was discarded in Gothic 1? Time will tell. I did mention weapons clipping through clothes, and this shot we can see that the sword he carries on his back does clip through the quiver a bit, but it's not that obvious, so it's definitely not a bad effort. The shot of Xardus' tower seems almost too sinister, as we see spikes everywhere and it's almost like he's the demon himself living in there, not to mention the red glow coming from the right side. They did make the fire demon look way different than anyone ever expected, and a lot of people have complained about it, but I have a feeling that might change as well. The tower itself definitely doesn't look inviting, and I think that's what the message was in the original too. We have already talked about very almost pitch black nights where you need a torch to navigate the land, but we didn't expect to have any lightning effects going in the distance such as in this shot right here. The lightning again is phenomenal, and the scenery very gothic like. We glance at another part of the sect camp where houses are made in very different styles than those of the old and new camp. 
The hero has only joined the set camp here, so he's only wearing a loincloth of the Brotherhood. Then finally we get a close-up of the nameless hero, who still seemed to represent Mike Hulk in all his glory, just much younger. Thoris is also there, and I like that the chest part of his armor doesn't cover half of his face like in the original, but it's still distinguishable enough for you to recognize the legend. Both armors look amazing here though. The next two shots are of a character, a digger that I assume is Mutt. I mean, judging by how dirty he is, and the mustache, and his silly face when talking, I don't have any doubt this could be anyone else. And of course Drax of the new camp, one of the first people you'll encounter when waltzing into the old camp. We can clearly see his fur armor here, and the details of it as they should be. As for his face, if you have listened to the fourth podcast, the lead 3D designer has said that they have made over 100 unique faces for special characters, and another 600 for all the others that might or might not repeat. I am sort of worried about how much space the game will take up at this point, but still, sometimes less is better, and sometimes more is better, depending on the context. The next clip is a hero killing a scavenger with the bow. I think this is the same location as the one before, which is sort of unknown to us at this time, but it's set up at a different time of the day. We do have a nice view of the mountains in the back though. It makes the world feel very big. One of the shots gives us a quick glimpse of what I guess is a shadow beast cave with a dead soldier in front of it and a lot of blood on the floor. Feels a bit surreal, but I cannot judge this clip without basically nothing happening in it. The clip that follows is far more interesting, however. If we look closely, there is a couple of snappers walking around this area. There seems to be a courtyard of some sort, and the structure resembles that of a monastery. So I'm guessing this is the design of the forgotten monastery in the eastern part of the valley near the sea that was abandoned by the druids. It looks very well done, I hope it will contain some additional floors to explore, or even a dungeon underneath filled with undead. Quick shot of the arena shows that they have added cages where they'll be storing wild animals for the strongest to fight. Although this was never part of the original arena, I for one am glad they're implementing this option as well. Something new. Next quick shot is a battle with a digger that the nameless loses, and the gore is kind of beyond what I expected it to be. I guess that's why the game is going to be for the mature audience, 17 plus. The fact they used the original death sound of a person brings back some memories as well. The combat system is said to be more advanced and complex than what we had in the original. Here we see the nameless fighting two giant rats with a pickaxe and seems to take them down in one shot each. Not sure if that was on purpose, but they were not that weak in Gothic 1 and 2. It could just be for a demonstration though. I like the way he was holding the pickaxe. Same as with the mole rat before, it seems to be based on the size of the opponent or beast you're fighting, which is wonderful. Quickshot is a war mage powering up for an ice blast against some bandits. I liked everything in this shot except for the ice spikes. I would have made them a bit different, but then again, I know animation isn't easy. We get another shot of the scavenger squealing. Nothing to add here besides the beautiful nature that it's surrounded by. Then another one of the skeleton mage, which we already had a screenshot of. It's very dark to see what's going on apart from the staff, its face and the glow that keeps it on its legs, or floating. Overall a nice design in my book. This next shot is just the nameless hero running towards something with a basic sword in his hand and nothing else. And then the next one is him getting rid of a couple of lizards with a double handed axe and shadow armor. Physics also differ here as the lizard that was killed last landed on top of the one that was already dead but yet still moved. And yes, it is normal to have these kinds of things to be normalized in modern games. Even Skyrim had it and it's been 13 years since its release. We get another quick shot with the bow hunting down some non-armored goblins and casting a spell which is probably something like Windfist and getting rid of some scavengers, wearing rogue and templar armor in each clip respectfully. Another shot is a fire mage taking down a few lizards, or fire lizards, I'd have to see this in real action to judge, but the fireball seems quite overpowered here. I like how the animation is though. 
We get two more shots of the Nameless fighting in a group of scavengers and another fighting a mine crawler in possibly the old mine. One with an axe and the other with a two-handed sword. And as said in the trailer, each weapon behaves differently depending on the training. I do wonder what kind of system they're going to use for this though. The Gothic 1, or Gothic 2 system or something completely new. We don't know anything about it yet. The only thing we do know about is that the diary is supposed to have a similar feeling. But instead everything is going to be in handwriting like you'd have in the real world. We get a few clips of the locations in the game that seem very known from the original. The first one is of an area with the scavenger which seems to be in the far away area in the west coming towards the Stonehenge. The second, I'm guessing, is the entrance to the Temple of the Sleeper, at least with the markings on the door that we see. We didn't have a door like this in the original, more of an iron door guarded by a couple of orc shamans. I'm not sure if this makes more sense or not, but I'll let you be the judge. The shot of a broken tower in the water with a waterfall in the background surely has to be Xardas' sunken tower, right? It could be, but with all the haziness in this shot, it's hard to tell. I can't think of anything else though. And this shot seems to be a completely new place because I cannot think of anything that looks remotely similar. They have hinted in the last podcast this could be one of those things they don't want to spoil too much. So it could well be part of the new camp, it could be near the lake or even somewhere in the vicinity of the rice fields. We'll know when the game comes out I suppose. I cannot speculate at all where this underwater shot could be. If you have any idea, write it in the comments below. The tower in the middle of the night could be one of those that stand near the swampland and has the sea nearby. And a lot of undead in the forgotten mines below. That's another guess from me. Then we get another shot of the Nameless shooting a raptor with a bow in the abandoned monastery. We have already seen this place, this is just a different perspective. I do not recognize the armor as the bottom chest part is missing. It could be a self-forged armor for all we know. And afterwards we return back to the south part of the old camp where we meet Fisk and the other shadows and guards. This looks almost identical to the one in Gothic 1, but expanded in a modern way. A lot more people seem to be moving around, but as I mentioned in one of the previous shots, I hope there's not too much activity in the night for the easier thieving. It still has to be challenging, of course. Since alchemical crafting wasn't a thing until Gothic 2, it's nice to see them implementing it here. It's not surprising given how many games have it nowadays. But I really like the shot of this alchemical table with a pot in the middle for cooking a potion. It makes a lot more sense than just stirring it up in a lab bottle and that's it. Good for you Alchemia. We get another quick shot of the entrance of the old camp and its castle. And a sarcophagus or a tomb to what I believe is to one of the high orc shamans that was well known for worshipping the demon lord. I wouldn't know where this could be though, either in the orc cemetery or somewhere more remote. You can even see skulls engraved into the wall in the back. This next one is just another random shot in the wilderness which again we can only guess where it is with the boars roaming about. And the shot that follows is a very important one. How will the climbing system work? We can see the nameless climbing here without any issues, but will there be stamina to work with? Will there be training needed for climbing? Is there any limits how far you can go? This can bring a whole lot of good with it, but also a whole lot of bad with it. This is gothic after all, and we're not sure if implementing an assassin's creed or a prince of Persia principle will work as well, but again we'll see. If I didn't like the previous clip that much, this one I absolutely do. And it's, as you've guessed it, the nameless hero with his four friends of different backgrounds and stories. I really do hope there's more than one or two quests involving each one of those guys though. It will go so far to say they need to expand their backstories for sure. If you'd like to know more about how they were developed in the early days, check out this video as well, link in the description. We get another quick shot of the very beginning following Diego of the exchange place towards the first gate. The cliffs are definitely a bit higher than what OG had to offer, but I actually love every bit of it. I believe this is the clip of the orc cemetery, not much has changed here, looks like they even still need to work on it a bit. And then we get another overview of the valley from a different angle. This is the last shot of the trailer, 
But the difference of the shots before is that we can now see Xardas' tower on the right side with a lot of snowy mountains in the background, which we were promised to get a piece of as well. But it does seem we'll have enough to explore in this new game. Oof. I have never written so much script for one video before, so I hope it was worth it. Here are my thoughts and perhaps prayers for whatever is to come and needs to come. So the game has been in development for about 3 years now and I am glad that THQ Nordic is not pushing Alchemia to hurry up with the project. They're actually embracing it to be as perfect as fans possibly want. Sure, there has been a hiccup with the collector's edition which if you ask me can still be changed in a lot of ways. But the game itself should be another classic in the making. If it's a remake of the original, we know that things can change. After all, it's 23 years later and newer generations have a harder time adjusting to a game like the old gothic. Mostly because there's no tutorial, there's no map to guide, there's nothing to tell you what to do, how to fight and where to go. Our generation played that, got to love the game over the course of playing it because it was so unique, amazing and different from anything else we've seen before. If they tried implementing something modern like a minimap or a cursor to show you where to go, that will break the immersion. But I think Alchemy already knows that, so they're testing the boundaries with this trailer alone. If you'd like to dive deeper into this gothic world, there's a discord they have been running for a long time now and anyone can join. As for me, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe and as always, thanks for watching.